You're listening to the Public Health Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Dr. Charlotte Huntley. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me on this episode. My name is Dr. Charlotte Huntley, and I'm thrilled that you've decided to join me today. On this podcast, we cover all sorts of topics at the intersection of public health and entrepreneurship. And we invite you to to tune in and to take what can help you on this journey to creating the business of your dreams. Now, I'm a public health entrepreneur, and I have over 20 years of experience in public health and healthcare, and I've supported a lot of entrepreneurs along the way. I've also been a podcaster since 2017. So although this podcast is new, I've been podcasting for a long time. This episode today is a continuation of what we just finished wrapping up, developing your elevator pitch. And I knew that there was going to be a sequel. I decided to just go ahead and put this right together because I wrapped up the last episode, which is episode nine, with a call to action, really leaning into you, encouraging you to practice, practice, practice. And then I said, practice some more. So I thought, let me come back and share with you some tips to make it easy for you to continue to practice your elevator pitch. Now, I encourage you to listen to episode nine if you did not hear that one, but just in a brief summary, I talked about how your elevator pitch is your brief introduction. It was, you know, I gave you a story of how I was literally on an elevator and I was in, you know, asked, so what do you do? And I had to really explain that within just a few seconds because I was approaching, quickly approaching my floor. So please check that one out if you didn't hear it already, but just continuing from there, we talked about, you know, why we need to develop it and some tips for developing it and left you with practicing. So now I want to really, it's so important that you practice that I thought, let me share a few easy ways for you to do that because consistency is key. So the more you do it, it's not about perfecting it. It's just, you get better at it and you feel much more confident in your pitch, even if it comes across you know, you feel like, oh gosh, I messed that all up. Some of the tips I'm going to share with you here can still help make that be a win for you. Okay. So the first, I guess if, you know, the very least, the easiest entry is to practice in front of a mirror. So that's a great place to start and really look at yourself while you are kind of executing and pretend that you are, you know, role play, create a scenario. We do this a lot in our in my group mastermind program. I create all the scenarios and and the members get to practice in those scenarios. And they're all very real scenarios that I've either been in or I've heard other people describe. So, or we're often in some of these same ones, like at a conference and, you know, we're at a table with other people and you're kind of introducing yourself. So practice in a mirror. That's a great place to start because if you just write it out, often what you write out does not translate well when you're speaking it. I see this a lot. Organizations develop, you know, a statement that describes what they do then when you try to read that, it's a real tongue twister and it doesn't flow as well as maybe it looked like it did on paper. So that can often happen with your elevator pitch. You can write it out, but then when you start to speak it, it doesn't quite flow as well as you thought. So the the very easy first place to start would be practicing in the mirror and be expressive and smile and use all the emotions come out. Like maybe even get yourself a little hyped up, get excited about it. Listen to some of your favorite music that gets you really pumped up and ready. You know, speakers do this before going on stage, do this before your elevator pitch and before you're practicing, even for yourself, because you will just become that more confident and being able to introduce yourself in your business. And if you're a new entrepreneur, it's even harder because you're already a little awkward and you feel a little insecure with the idea of being a business owner or, or just a new entrepreneur, even if you, if it's just not a full business, but it's maybe it's something that you're doing, writing or blogging or podcasting, and you're just early trying to figure out where it's going. And you may feel a little bit extra insecure just because of all that newness. And then now you've got to introduce yourself and you're feeling ultra awkward practicing in the mirror and using that expressiveness and getting yourself excited and kind of ready can go a long way. I mentioned in the previous episode to record yourself. That's a great way to kind of practice And also being able to critique yourself without beating yourself up. Please don't be overly harsh on yourself if you practice and then watch your recording, you know, critiquing every single detail. Don't do that to yourself. This is just for to kind of pinpoint an opportunity where not just to improve, but also to see what you're doing really well. Maybe you'll see that some of that really comes across really well and you want to make sure that you continue to do, you know, that technique or that method, right? Another way to practice is 
with your friends and family. Make sure that you practice this introduction. Family members like to role play and practice with you. So, and they don't have to be in public health. I think that's even better if they're not, because they're going to ask some really genuine, sincere questions and help pinpoint areas that you thought were pretty clear, but they really aren't. You know, I explained in the last episode how that happened to me with my friends. So pitching to your friends and family, that has a double benefit. Not only does it help you practice, but it also helps them to get really clear about what you do and who you serve because they're going to go out there and tell other people about what you're doing, which is a great thing. It'll bring more clients your way. All right. Now, this next one I have not tried, but I know that it is an option. There are actual workshops like where you can practice your pitch for your business. It could be a local meetup or group. There are even some competitions where you can pitch for some sort of reward or prize. I think those are some good scenarios to put yourself in if you're up for the challenge. I think if I had the opportunity to do something like that close by in my area, I may give it a try. But I think it's a great way to get you kind of out of your comfort zone. If you need to have a little bit more experience being in front of strangers or in front of a group or crowd, that could be a great way for you to practice pitching and explaining what you do. And sometimes those competitions aren't just an elevator pitch, not just a short few seconds, but are a little bit longer. But all of that can go a long way when helping you to figure out like what iteration am I going to share, kind of reading the room and deciding what version of your introduction fits with the scene that you're in. I think if you have mentors or advisors, often practice with them and get some feedback as well. So they may also be in public health and, and give you some really good feedback. So I think there's benefits to practicing with people who are not in public health and then people who are familiar and in the industry can give you uh, valuable feedback. And it's a good way to practice either way. Here's another one that I think we all would naturally run away from, and that's just pitching to strangers. So how many times are you in a situation where you almost want to avoid trying to talk to strangers, maybe um, in the airports or on a plane, or, you know, there's that situation where you can tell the person next to you really wants to chat, but you're trying not to make eye contact because maybe you really don't want to. That's a great time to practice your elevator pitch because you're likely not going to see them again, but you never know where that could land. I'm reminded of a, a time when we were traveling and this has, well, this has happened a couple of times. We were on vacation and my husband is like Mr. Extrovert and I'm Mrs. Introvert. Um, so I love people, but I just get drained by a lot of the interaction. And so after a bit of time, I need to kind of be in a quiet space. He was actually talking with some people who were from the other side of the world from us and the conversation. So what do you do? And I started talking. It turns out both of these people are in a similar industry in a European country. I'm in the US, US they're a European country. And we had a lot of overlap. It was actually a very engaging, very interesting conversation. At the very least, they ended up pulling out their phones. They found my podcast and, and started following. This is my first podcast, the Public Health Epidemiology Conversations. That just goes to show you that practicing with a stranger could just be practicing one and done. You critique yourself and move on. It could hit or it could, you know, kind of be a complete miss. They're not interested at all and they want you to go away. Or it could be a really engaging conversation where, you know, you gain a new follower and you never know where these things may lead. But practicing with a stranger is actually a little easier than scary. It may feel scary, but it actually may be a little easier because you really you think, what have you got to lose? You may not ever talk to them again anyway. But, you know, they could potentially be really aligned and interested in what you're doing. So give it a try. <laughs> Practice with the strangers. Practicing your elevator pitch, your introduction with strangers that you normally would look to kind of avoid eye contact with or not really want the conversation. But I encourage you to just try the conversation and see what happens. This also happened a lot where it may be just in certain communities, maybe your local area or out shopping and you know, just look for opportunities where you would normally shy away and not want to strike the conversation, but choose this time to just practice your elevator pitch and see what happens. Okay. A couple more ideas about how to practice, and then I'm going to wrap up for you. Like I said, there are those competitions and different platforms. I think there are even some pitching apps that you can download that can help you practicing your elevator pitch. Let's see. The big thing in practicing is to remember to iterate and refine. As important as it is to change and revise, it's equally important to hold on to the parts that are working well. So keep the parts in 
your elevator pitch or your brief introduction. Keep those parts in that are working well. And you'll hear this from feedback and just in general from conversation. So for myself, <laughs> I have a couple of different iterations and it just kind of depends. At the moment that I realize someone's about to ask, what do you do? I'm already searching in my mind, what version am I going to share with them? So at the very basic, you know, simplified pitch for me is, I help large nonprofit organizations communicate their health information in plain language to the people in the communities they serve. Now, that very brief elevator pitch will often, if they're not my ideal client, they will understand what I'm saying, but not really care. And that's okay. But for my ideal client types, especially if they're part of a nonprofit organization, what I hear more is, oh, they may share it how sometimes complicated health information gets lost or, you know, they can, that resonates with them. Oh yes, I know it's sometimes, you know, it's too complicated for people to understand and they will go back and forth a little bit, but they may come back with something and then I'll share something else. And sometimes what I end up hearing often, well, tell me more. I really want to know more about how this works. What exactly do you do there? And that's exactly what you want. So again, like I was saying before, in developing your elevator pitch, it just needs to be concise and clear, include who you serve and what you do, like your ideal clients and the problems you solve. That's what I did. My ideal clients, those large nonprofit organizations, and the problem I solve is, you know, simplified health information. They need to understand their health information, right? Now, if I'm in a situation where I have a really good sense that these are my public health people, if I'm at a public health conference, for example, I may, you know, change a few things in that initial introduction that I may add in the fact that I'm specifically, you know, I really do target BIPOC-focused organizations, so those that are serving Black, Indigenous, and people of color. I'm a little careful not to just assume that everybody understands BIPOC if I don't know truly who I'm speaking to, like with the audience. But if I'm at a public health conference, I'm talking to people who are also attending this conference, and I'm asked the question, you know, well, what do you do? I'm going to take it up a notch or two because I'm going to assume and and probably for good reason that they're going to understand. So I'm going to probably add in the BIPOC layer that I, you know, really target those that are serving BIPOC communities. And then the questions or the feedback I get is a little different. So we start engaging and I decide where to pivot as I add more information, but it becomes, you want to initiate a conversation. And even in those conferences, it's not maybe the place to go into a deep dive conversation, but you at least want to exchange enough information to know that for them to know that, oh, well, I want to follow up with this person after the conference, or I want to connect with this person and learn more at another time because, you know, conferences were moving really quickly. So I think the elevator pitch is just such a wonderful opportunity for you to introduce yourself and share about what you do and who you do it for, who you, who you serve and get that conversation started. So pick any of these tips I just shared with you on this episode and as far as how you can practice. And hopefully I've given you enough reason. I've really sold this point of how important this is that you will find a way to continue to practice and refine your elevator pitch or your brief introduction so that people can get to know more about you and your business and it moves, attracts more clients your way, more ideal clients your way. All right. I am going to wrap up this topic for now. I could go on because it's that important and there's so much more that could be shared, but I'll just save it for later. All right. As we continue on with these episodes of the podcast, I do appreciate all of you who are sharing the podcast and I continue to ask you to help us promote the podcast by sharing to your networks. You can share by right now, if you're listening to this episode through one of the podcast apps. Just share this episode with your friend. Use one of the sharing buttons. On our website, publichealthentrepreneurs.com, you can share the URL with your friends, share the website with your friends and network and have them. On our website, you'll hear about our mastermind program and this podcast. So the show notes are there. All the details are there. And then also consider writing a favorable review in Apple Podcasts. I would greatly appreciate that. This podcast is a tremendous effort on my part and the part of my team to create these episodes, produce these episodes, and to consistently share them with all of you and keep them freely available. So I ask that you help us out by sharing the podcast and writing a favorable review in Apple Podcasts. So whichever option you choose, I just appreciate your effort to help us promoting this podcast. All right, everyone, until next time, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for listening. Visit publichealthentrepreneurs.com to learn more. 